Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing my favourite books of Q4, so that is October, November and December of 2021. As always, there are 10 books, we go in reverse order, and because this is my last favourites of the year, that means my year favourites is coming soon as well, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But without further ado, in at number 10, Dane reads... We have Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. So Seneca was a Stoic philosopher, and um, these are basically letters he did actually write during his lifetime to various people. But it's also thought like even during his lifetime, he knew that these were gonna be sort of published and used after his death as well, and that were like his gift to posterity. There's some really interesting stuff. I mean, I did a full review. In fact, I'll link below to all of the full reviews I did of all of these books. Um, but basically a lot of food for thought. One of the most interesting things is he talks about how you shouldn't necessarily like listen to what philosophers say. And then it's like, yeah, but you're a philosopher and you're saying that mate. But yeah, overall very, uh, very good. And also I thought it was gonna be a bedtime read because I'd normally read letter collections as best as bedtime books because they're normally quite dry. But this one I was just very happy with and just read as my main book. Then we have The Secret of Crickley Hall by James Herbert. So this is kind of the archetypal ghost story. I also watched the um, the TV adaptation of it, which, which was quite cool because it had Maisie Williams in it. Um, so that was interesting because I wasn't expecting that. And um, yeah, basically it's a haunted house story. Um, it kind of jumps a bit between the past and the present because during the war, a bunch of um, kids were evacuated there and then there was a big flood. Um, and so it's one of those where we kind of see the story of the past slowly unfolding through the eyes of the main characters. And again, just a very well done ghost story. I think it's probably, is one that I think a lot of people since then have based their ghost stories on. Then we have House of Trades by Kevin J. Anderson and Brian Herbert. This is at number eight. And then at number seven, we have House Arconum by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. These are two of the Dune continuation books. They're a prequel, part of a prequel trilogy um, that kind of sets up the events of the main Dune books. Now, a lot of people have a lot of negative things to say about these books, but as you can tell, I really enjoyed them. Um, House Harkonnen slightly more, possibly because it was building on the groundwork that the first one had led. Don't be deceived by the names of the books as well, because you don't only follow House of Trades or only follow House Harkonnen. We kind of get to see a bit of everyone. And we even get to see, like, you know, Gurney Halleck and Duncan Idaho and stuff as young men and how they came to be in the service of the Atreides. So, really interesting stuff. Then we have The Secret of Cold Hill by Peter James, which is basically a modern version of The Secret of Crickley Hall. It's set on a like new build housing estate. It actually follows up from The House on Cold Hill, um, which is his, his previous one. And Peter James is mostly known for writing his Roy Grace series of crime novels. Um, but he does horror very well, and I would be very surprised if he wasn't influenced um, by James Herbert, because like some of the gore scenes and stuff it's just like that reads as though james herbert read it but i i think that's a high compliment you know peter james is just a great writer and i hope he does more horror like i do enjoy his crime stuff but i would like to see see him do more horror for sure then we have Ayub Khan Din, East is East. So this is a play, it was later turned into a movie. There's also a sequel movie called West is West, which is very good and I would recommend. So I'd seen the movie East is East a long time ago when I was younger um, and I did enjoy it, but kind of forgot all about it. And then I saw this in a charity shop and was decided to pick it up. I think it, it won like a lot of accolades and awards and stuff when it first came out and I can see why, because it's just a very well written play kind of investigating like the, the family dynamic and stuff like that. Um, but it also kind of covers what it's like to be a British Muslim um, and especially to belong to like a biracial family. So the father's Muslim, the, the mother is uh, English, Christian. Um, and they have their kids and whatnot and there's a black sheep of the family and all of this stuff. It's set in the 70s in Bradford, I wanna say. Might also be Salford in Manchester, it's one of those. And um, yeah, just really well written. I would love to go and see a performance of this at some point. Okay, next up we have The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. So this is hailed as being like one of the uh, first detective novels. Uh, it, it can't be the first because in it, Wilkie Collins writes about someone reading a detective novel unless he was just sort of being hopeful and trying to predict the future, I guess. But um, yeah, very readable. I buddy read this with Charles Heathcote. Um, there's some really interesting characters in it. Not all of them are likable, but that's okay. You don't want that in a novel, really. It's also interesting because one of the characters is based on Jack Witcher of uh, the Suspicions of Mr. Witcher fame. And indeed the case itself is a little bit based upon the murder at Roadhill House. Um, and like I say, it's just one of those detective stories. I think if you're into detective fiction, you kind of got to read it, you know? So yeah, it was a good one. 
Then we have The Dark by James Herbert. So in this one he does what James Herbert does best, which is he takes something that a lot of people are afraid of and then just takes it to its logical conclusion, I guess, and makes it really terrifying. So in this, um, basically if people go out into the darkness, they sort of lose their minds and go a bit... Um, and start killing each other and raping each other and stuff. It's, it's pretty grim, to be honest. Uh, there's lots of gore and stuff, which uh, Herbert does really well. And overall, just a cracking horror novel. And number two, we have The Last Keeper by J.V. Hilliard. So I may be a bit biased on this one because this is a book uh, that a client of mine wrote. Uh, so I worked on it as the editor. But I really am very impressed by it. It's um, kind of a mixture of uh, epic fantasy and YA fantasy. Um, the guy has been running Dungeons & Dragons campaigns for... 30 odd years um, and he's just sort of pulled together all of this lore he's created, this mythical land, so all the world building's top notch, some really interesting creatures in it, even down to the fact like you can't have orcs, because I mean people obviously do put them in their books but technically like Tolkien owns the copyright on that, D&D &D owns the copyright um, on, a, on a lot of monsters as well, so he kind of created a lot of his own monsters which is really interesting. Um, and then there's lots of like politics and all of this stuff. Bit of love in, in it as well, but not enough to turn me off. Some uh, great fight scenes, there's a big naval battle. Um, definitely check it out. And then my top book of the quarter was Something Happened by Joseph Heller. So my friend Dave told me actually, the joke is that nothing happens in Something Happened. I can kind of see where he's coming from in that because it is one of those that's more about like the the characters and I guess like the philosophies they have and the outlooks they have on life and the relationships they have between each other. It basically follows this guy called Bob Slocum who works in not like a dead end job because he is in like a senior management or a management position at least. Um, but he works in an office and kind of hates it. And I think it just speaks to anybody who's worked in an office. I mean, I know I recognised a lot of the offices that I've worked for in this book. And um, it was just very gripping. I loved reading it. So there we have it. Those are my quarter four favourites. I will be soon doing my uh, top 40 books of the year, which brings together all of my favourites. So these 10 will be included, plus 30 others. You'll have to watch that to see what my favourite book of the year is. In the meantime, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.